I'm Dr. Kathleen Mollis, New York City-based audiologist, also known as EarDoc of TikTok, and I'm here to answer all of your ear questions. So very happy to be here with Luke today. I hear you all have some great questions for me. Tinnitus is an internal sound. So tinnitus is this like phantom sound that your brain is creating because it's expecting to get more stimulation from the outside environment, which is why you can have an increase in tinnitus when you have hearing loss because your ears are not sending as robust of a message up to your brain as it's expecting to get. So it essentially creates a sound to keep itself busy because it thinks it's missing something. So if the tinnitus is coming from inside your brain, then really what you're wearing earplugs for is uh, to block out external sounds. It's sort of an apples and oranges situation where it's not really talking about the same thing um, and they can actually work against each other. So for some people, um, wearing earplugs will actually make the tinnitus worse because you are taking away all of the external sounds or a good amount of them, you're really bringing them down, which brings their tinnitus to the forefront and actually makes it more bothersome. And part of that is because whenever you block up your ears, it amplifies internal sounds. It's called the occlusion effect. For other people, maybe bringing the edge off of the external sounds, but still allowing some of it in, creates a better balance for them. So with tinnitus, it actually becomes more pronounced or more bothersome when people are stressed or when they are tired um, or when they haven't eaten well. Um, all of them can cause tinnitus spikes. So in that way, earplugs could be helpful because you're lowering the noise, you're reducing that stimulus that could cause stress and anxiety, but then you still have the tinnitus. So it's a trade-off between, you know, how are we reducing the stress and are you reducing it enough to make the tinnitus? also become less apparent to you. But I would think more commonly, it would be that first group where it would actually make it worse. So after you go to a concert, a lot of people say they feel like their hearing is down. They might have some ringing or buzzing in the ears, tinnitus. So the muffled sensation, feeling like your hearing is down and that your ears are actually full, uh, that is a temporary threshold shift. So your ear is not, it's not built to really endure really loud volumes, which is, powerful sound waves, if you think about it. And inside your ear, so there's your cochlea, your hearing organ, and inside your cochlea, there are, are these tiny little hair cells that have cilia up top. That That is the MVP of the hearing system. They are responsible for sensing everything in the environment and then uh, funneling it down into um, an impulse along the auditory nerve. So if these hair cells aren't responding appropriately, then you're not going to be as sensitive to sound. That is what hearing loss is at its core, is changes to the hair cells. So these little cilia, they um, sort of get overpowered with this very, very large sound wave and it damages them temporarily. So they are not as sensitive and they can't send as much information up to your brain, which is a threshold shift. We call it temporary because um, after a concert, your thresholds will usually come back up. So if you did a hearing test right after a concert, your hearing might be down. If you came back a couple of days later, it would probably be up if it were a true temporary threshold shift. And then along with it, the feeling of fullness would, would go away also. The problem is that even if your hearing is coming back up, the temporary threshold shift can have this really sort of hidden damage um, that it's doing over the long term. And a bunch of temporary threshold shifts can add up to a permanent threshold shift, which is what we call noise-induced hearing loss. And that is what the 1 billion people are at risk for right now based off of that last study. So it is all related to the damage that the way too loud sounds are doing to those hair cells. And if you're lucky, those hair cells will bounce right back up. If you're not, then those hair cells are still down and that's going to be a permanent hearing loss. I would tell them that they should be worried if it lasts more than a couple of days. That is probably a sign that something permanent happened and that perhaps 
that one noise exposure was way too powerful or that was the last straw of you've just been doing this too long and you've gone too many times to a concert unprotected. So for concerts, um, you want to make sure you're using the right kind of earplugs because concert music, that's a very different stimulus um, or signal than what construction workers are trying to block out. There's a lot of different kinds of noise out there and music that is a good kind of noise. But the thing with music is that of course you want to hear all of the different dynamics. You want to hear all the different instruments. It's usually very familiar to you. That's why you're going to concerts. So it, you want it to sound true to what it is. So what you want to make sure is that you have an earplug that has flat attenuation. And what we mean by that is that it has an equal effect on all the different pitches or frequencies, which you see in what we usually refer to as musicians plugs, but any kind of um, earplug that has a certain kind of filter in it, that makes sure that it's going to be that flat attenuation rather than like the dense foam plugs that will cause distortion because it will have a greater effect at certain pitches than others and then it just won't sound right to you and then what's the point of going to a concert. Listening to AirPods or headphones or anything like that Absolutely. And this is something that um, has been a high priority for audiologists lately. And then it's really been gaining more attention, like World Health Organization is now involved. There's all of these studies coming out. And there was a big study that was released in uh, December, I believe, that showed that 1 billion young adults aged 16 through 35 are at risk for a permanent um, hearing loss due to unsafe listening habits. So all of this is self-inflicted. It's people that are not using their headphones appropriately. And, you know, AirPods, headphones, are having cell phones in general, all great, but our ears were not built to have to tolerate that long of noise exposure and certainly not that direct of noise exposure. So it certainly is something that needs to be talked about. And I think a lot of people, it's a lack of education. They don't know that they are permanently damaging their hearing loss and it's fully preventable. All you have to do is lower the volume and make sure that you're paying attention to both how loud you're listening and how long you're listening for. One of the best things you can do for your ears and specifically your hearing is to wear earplugs. And it's a little thing that's super easy to do. It's not expensive to do. It's a very passive mechanism. There's really no barriers to it, but not enough people are doing it. And the reason that it is so important is because when you are wearing an earplug, you are um, reducing the noise that you are exposed to. So when you are being exposed to sounds above a certain volume, in the United States, 85 dB is like a hard cutoff. That's a very loud volume. Above that, we get nervous about damage. And that includes whether it's factory workers or you're at a concert, noise is noise. But when you are above that volume, you could be damaging your hearing and the louder it is, the faster that damage is going to happen. So when you wear earplugs, you're going to um, essentially lower that volume. So you're wearing them in your ears and when it goes through the earplugs, the, uh, the sound signal that's actually getting to your cochlea and the hearing organ, is going to be lower, it will be safer, which means you can enjoy certain environments that would be too loud for you to be in without them, like a concert. So it's really important for the prevention, both of hearing loss and tinnitus, because both of them are related to noise exposure and that noise-induced hearing loss that so many people are at risk for is permanent and it's just silly because it is fully preventable. All you have to do is wear earplugs and watch what volume you're listening to music at. Um, and then tinnitus we know is very much related to damage in the ears. So if you have damage in the ears from noise, you're more likely to develop tinnitus. So you're reducing your risk of that as well with earplugs. For choosing hearing protection, you wanna think about what are you protecting your hearing from? What is the stimulus? So that's why you see um, people that are working on construction sites with the big earmuffs. They have to protect their hearing to a very different stimulus. 
and a different volume. It's a different signal that's coming into your ear. So you need to make sure that the hearing protection is going to address that sort of signal. If you want to protect for music or to really be able to enjoy music, then you want to make sure you have something with those filters in it to really make sure you have that flat, flat attenuation and it's going to sound natural. If you want to sleep in your hearing protection, you need to make sure it's soft and it's going to be comfortable for you to wear um, overnight and to sleep on your side. So there's a couple of different factors, big things being what are you protecting your hearing from? When are you wearing it? How long are you wearing it? Um, and just what is your goal of the hearing protection? There's a lot of other noise that we are exposing ourselves to. It's all self-inflicted. So if you are listening to music or podcasts or you're watching TV even, you have to think about what um, volume you are listening at. So uh, again, noise is noise. It can be a podcast, a TV, music, construction, all of it, your ear doesn't know the difference. So you need to make sure that you are always thinking about the noise level. If you are at a restaurant or some sort of situation and say you don't have your uh, earplugs with you, I would recommend to download a sound level meter app where you can actually see how loud is this environment and you can make an educated decision. Do I want to stay in this environment? How long can I stay in there? And it, be safe? Or is there a quiet part that I can move to, maybe away from the kitchen, away from the do door, away from the bar, put yourself up against a wall, there's other things you can do. As an audiologist, I think it's really important for people to know that um, prevention is a whole lot easier to deal with and to actually act on than when you have hearing loss. Hearing loss is a very difficult problem to solve. So the best thing you could do is prevent it from happening to begin with. And what's in your control? You wear hearing protection, like earplugs. You make sure that you're watching the volume and how much noise you're exposed to. And all of that will go a long way. I think we will think about noise in the future, like how we now view wearing sunscreen when you're going out or how we view secondhand smoke. Um, I really think that's what we'll think about when we think of noise in the future and there's no reason we can't start acting on that now.